because we're live. Okay. We're going to find out. All right. This is all Mark's fault. <laughs> it's got to be somebody's fault. He's the captain. I plugged it in. We'll right. find out here sh just a minute or two if everybody can see us or not. Hey, we got stream. Hi, guys. Looks like we're up and running. Let me adjust this a little, though. Bring this in just a touch so we get Mark's beautiful face on here even better. There we go. Okay, yeah, we're up and going. Thanks everybody for your patience. I appreciate it. We are 17 minutes late, but uh, I don't even need to be in this. I'll just lean over like this. No, no, you're fine, guys. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. There we go. All right, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for the patience. We're running a little late. We had some connection issues, but we're up and running now. Let me uh, jump through, make sure. Okay, yeah, we still got people here, so we're on the right stream. Great. Appreciate everybody being there. Happy Sunday to you. Happy December the 10th. Two weeks before Christmas. Yeah? Yeah. 21 days before the New Year. Yep. Wow. I turned all <laughs> my Christmas uh, letters in. Hope I get all my gifts that I asked You've been for. a bad boy. So yeah, I Santa, know. I don't know. Santa probably forgot this house a long time ago. Um, hey, guys, gals, if you could let me know if you can hear Mark and uh, Lenny okay. They got the mic going okay uh, over there. We're trying to mute Mark as much as we can, but uh, once he starts, it's hard to turn him off. All right, but it sounds like, uh, sounds like everybody can hear us okay. I'm glad you hear that. Ah, everybody's saying good. Mark, Lenny, thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, no, no. I'm in Mark's house, so yeah. thanks for having me here. My shop. This, is, this yeah. is my house. My wife would say, get this out of <laughs> this here. <is> a mess. <laughs> but I'm very, very honored and very, very happy to have these two guys here. If you guys don't know who these guys are, I don't know where you've been. These guys tore it up last year on the tournament trail. Captain Mark's been fishing the Great Lakes for probably 150 years or some, something close to that. 153. 153, he says. And Captain Lenny, you've been out there you know, 10, 12 years also, quite a while. And yeah. you guys both run excellent charts. So what we're going to do is uh, I did have a bunch of stuff I was going to talk about due to the, um, the lateness of us getting on here. I'll, I'll uh, skip through that. Purple Taco Fly Supply Giveaway. I do have the winners that I have to draw for that. What I'll do is I will draw those out tomorrow on a different live stream. It'll just be better that way so uh, we can streamline this some. Repos Rescues. I've had a lot of people email me asking how they can donate to Repos Rescues. That is our cause for this year. Every year we do a donation um, to an animal shelter here in town. They do really good work. So if you want to donate to that, it is in the description, or I'll put it in the description. It's probably not in this one now. We had to restart this thing. But it, I will put uh, the description where you can donate directly to them, or you can donate through me, um, through PayPal, or you can purchase merchandise for the shop as well. 100% of those profits I'll donate to uh, Repos Rescues. I will say this. If you donate, for every $40 you donate, I will put your name in the hat for that charter giveaway. You'll either get a uh, Big Lake Charter with me if you win or a River Trip with me if you win. So uh, the grand prize winner will get to choose one of those. The second place winner will get to choose or gets the uh, the one that the guy didn't choose. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Glad to hear it. So for every $40 that you donate, if you donate $120, you get three entries. If you donate $160, you get four entries, so on and so on. If you donate $4,000, you get 100 entries, which would be really nice if somebody would do that. Uh, but uh, whatever you can do is wonderful. You can donate 50 cents. That's fine. It helps those guys out tremendously, and they need it. They really do need it. Every year they struggle. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge animal lover. You guys strike me as animal lovers. Maybe Mark, not so much, but... Uh, oh, yeah. He had yeah. a goldfish that... Quite the story in itself. Yeah, world record goldfish. I mean, it lived for 154 upside years, Upside down, right? swimming upside it down. Swam sideways for Hand seven fed. or eight years. Every day, fed twice. It was a story. If it only knew what I did oh, to, it, God. to his cousins. This this live stream is going to be epic in so yeah. many ways. Yeah. The, the way it started was amazing. <laughs> we had all sorts of difficulties. Um, but I will put the links on the description once this video is over they are not there now obviously we had to restart this thing so it got wiped out but they'll be there they'll be there um also i've now started a podcast section on this channel if you go to the channel just tangle tackle fishing there's a podcast section 
most of these live streams I'm going to put into podcasts. Um, so if you want to listen later on, through however you get your podcast, I think that might just be YouTube right now. But I'll expand as it goes. So that's going on as well. So not only can you watch these good-looking guys, you can listen to them on the podcast section also. So, all right. How many people we got here? We got about 100 people here. I think we lost a few and we had to restart. But anyway, let's get in, into tonight's topic of the week. Tonight's topic is tournament fishing, salmon tournaments. Um, I'm lucky to be, like I said, I'm lucky to have these two guys here. I'm going to take a moment to let these guys introduce themselves. Captain Mark, Shimura, C-H-M-U-R-A, <laughs> Peer Pressure Charters, and been fishing out of Manistee since 1988. 1988. Yep. That's a year after I graduated I high mean, school. I mean, I fished when I was a kid all the way up, and I was, you know, right. I remember three or four years old, and I used to make my dad, or ask my dad, Dad, can you pull over? I think there's fish in that creek. And, you know, it, it would drive him nuts, but he pulled over a lot of the times, and I'd be looking for him, you know, but I've always had it in me. You know, either you got it in you or you don't. Yeah, that's true. So. Captain Lenny, take a sec to introduce yourself. Yep. Captain Lenny, Slipknot Charters out of Manistee. Um, I've been out of Manistee for 10 years now. And um, it's a great port. I mean, yeah. guy next to me, he proved it's probably one of the best fishing ports. Captain Fred from 30 Pounder. I mean, yeah, yeah, good history here yeah. in Manistee. Well, yeah. no doubt well, about it. You know, we have something that a lot of people don't have. We and have you. It's a good learning area around here mm -hmm. because we have a tremendous show. Mm -hmm. We have a tremendous amount of water to fish. It, we can be out in... Seven, eight hundred foot of water in, in, you know, half hour, 20 minutes, whatever, however fast your boat is. And then yet, you know, the shoreline and from point, you know, even a little point, but Point Sable to Point Betsy, mm -hmm. some of the best fishing in the world. Oh, without a doubt, it's world class. So, you know, if you're fishing down in the lower part, it's more of a bowl. Mm -hmm. And, but the structure that we have up here, you can learn a lot out of it. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Even somebody like me can go out there and catch fish. So, you're right. Yeah, right. I'm pretty. You, no, you, <laughs> you know what? As if you put your heart into something and you learn about it and try about it, you know what? I, I got a kick out of watching. I don't mean no disrespect, but I got a kick out of watching Tournament Trail these last few weeks, not because we're on it or any of that, but there was a boat with three guys in it, and all three of them were on the telephone. And then there's a guy getting ready to net a fish, and the fish is from here to the, lay the way, and he's got the phone stuck, and finally he throws it, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think that's the best way to learn. I can't say for anybody else, but what I used to do is I used to come out of the pier mouth, look at the lake, evaluate it for the waves. Remember what we had the day before for currents? What have the currents done? What's the temps out there? Mm -hmm. What are, is it? Is it going to be flat and clear? Is it going to be really stirred up or whatever? So wa water clarity, all of them things are big factors. And to find and fish, I mean, you pretty much everybody that's going to put five hundred bucks to fish a tournament knows how to catch a fish. Mm -hmm. But to stay consistent with it. It's not chasing other people's fish. You're exactly right, Mark. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. So you guys uh, won the big the big thing last year. You won the uh, the Founders Cup. Yep. It's a great honor. Congratulations to you guys, Lenny. That's on your boat, though, right? Yes. Oh, that's on your boat. Lenny. <laughs> I'm congratulating you. Guys. Congratulations, Lenny. <laughs> but okay. uh, tell me about the boat you fish, Len. I got a 31 foot Tierra. Um, it's an open 1990. I was really fortunate. I found this boat over in Lake St. Clair, and it was a one owner, and it had $300 on it. And the boat, boat sat in, inside a factory for 17 years out of its 30 years and never was even used. So it was like a brand new, like finding a 68 Mustang in a barn. Right. It, right. So um, I've had it for three years, and I fished it hard the last three years, and it's, it's a fishing machine. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, what's the boat that uh, you normally run on the big lake? 33, Tierra. 33 open? Two more feet bigger than Lenny. Well, you you remember that, two feet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, I'm still. All right, so you guys primarily primarily fished Lenny's boat the last year in all the tournaments. Yeah. And what tournaments did you fish? Well, I just want to tell a quick story. Sure. To get it over with. No, no, please do. Okay. A year and a half ago or so, just went to the hospital, went to the doctors for regular physicals. And my PSA levels were high. So uh, 
he sent me to the oncologist. So I went to the oncologist and uh, they did samples on me. And he told, uh, told me two weeks later after they called me up, he says, Mark, you have stage four cancer and it's very aggressive. And I was, you know, when he said stage four, but then when he said when it was really aggressive, I kind of went back on my seat. My wife, my sister-in-law heard it and they started crying. You sure. Know? And so I was numb for a little bit. And then I said, I'm going to fight it. And uh, I fought it and I had great doctors in a great hospital where I, where I was at. But uh, on that chemo, I didn't think I was going to make it. I remember laying in bed for nine, ten days without moving and all that. And all the fishing that we've done in the past would just go and buy me, you know, and, and it's just memories now. Is that all that's left is memories? So uh, I sat there and uh, slowly started getting better. And I went through radiation, just about finished radiation. And I hadn't had my boat in the water for all that time because I was sick. Mm-hmm. Lenny says to me, hey, Mark, you want to fish the Manistee Tournament? And I'm like, you know, frail and weak. And, and I said, Lenny, if I can do it, and inside I'm like, man, I want to do it, but can I do it? Mm -hmm. And then it came time that we're going to do it, and it was like Thursday. I said, okay, I'm going to give it a go. I said, but if I don't feel good, I'm going down below. So we go out, we set out Saturday morning for the tournament. And uh, just to be out there again, you know. And I look over to see Lenny, and he says, why don't you take the right side? I'll take the left, left side. And so all of a sudden, I'm feeling a little stronger, you know. I'm like, well, I didn't think I had this in me yet. You know, I thought I was like, I pushed myself. So uh, he says to me, uh, you take the right side, I take the left. And we started going and put it down. Boom, I got a fish on. Here's the funny part. First fish I get on, we have three customers. He's got, think, takes customers with him, mm -hmm. which is good. So... I get the first fish on Big King, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm fighting him. I got him calmed down. I said, okay, which one of you guys want him? They said, no, no, no. Lenny says, we can catch the little ones. You you get them. Oh, we you wanna, get the big ones, We yeah. want to win. I looked at Lenny. I go, really? You know? <laughs> so I get that fish in, get him in the net. Oh, there goes another rod. It didn't stop. And I and I don't mean no, I mean, I won 52 tournaments prior to this, right? Mm -hmm. I had never experienced nothing like this. So... We come in, and we're in first place. So we go out the second day, do the same thing. We didn't do anything crazy. We got people all around us. We got all the right stuff. We got stuff working, you know. First rod goes off. Mark, 40 foot. I got one, you know. And So uh, we get done with the Manistee tournament. Mm -hmm. the, that's the, the Budweiser you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Triport now, so yeah. We go to the yeah. Yeah. and we win by 80 pounds. I said, Lord, you're awful good to me. I knew it wasn't me. So, so Lenny says a week after that, you know, I'm like, you know, I feel great. Feeling a little you know? better. Yeah, well, I feel, I'm like, I'm doing good. So Lenny says to me, hey, you want to go to do Ludington? Okay. <laughs> you know, so we go do Ludington. First day we're in first place. Second day we win. I fish four days, we're in first place every day. And I'm like, Lord, why, what did I do to deserve this? Like I said, I've, I've won 52 of them. There's nothing like this. Mm -hmm. So Lenny says, you want to do Frankfurt? I go, Frankfurt, here we come. <laughs> okay. How so could you we, say no at that yeah. point? So we go to Frankfurt, first day, first place. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm probably getting too used to this, right? Well, no, you know? then the Lord said, we're going to have a north blow. Right. And we're going to mess it up right. for you. So we go out. <laughs> The second day in the Frankfurt tournament. Prior to that, Dave Baker from Flat Out calls. Those are all his rod holders over there. Mm -hmm. just, so he calls me up. He says, "Mark, can you bring me a rod holder tomorrow? We really want to try it on the center rigger." I'm like thinking to myself, "Can you wait till Monday or so?" You know. <laughs> right. So Lenny's like, "Yeah." So, anyways, I end up bringing him a rod holder. So I'm walking down the dock in the morning, and, and everybody's I, talking to him. And like, I, "Come on!" And I, I give Baker the rod holder. So he goes and puts it on us. Why don't we go take off? So we had north where we started at the day before, and that water flipped over. It was mm -hmm. cold there. So we were a little bit too far north, and I'm like, and we're looking at each other. It probably took 45 minutes for our first, first fish. Line. 
And I'm like, you know, to, to get 10 fish, you can't yeah. wait 45 minutes. Right. Yeah. So we're coming and we're just about ready to, you know, we got to run, we got to go, you know, and there goes the diver. So we get it in and then it just kept getting better and better. So we got all our fish and we went in and I, we thought we had it wrapped up and not cocky or anything, but we thought we had it. Felt pretty it. good, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And then here comes Baker in the ninth inning, two outs, you know, and he walks up, you know, <laughs> we did it, we hammered him. <laughs> said, you didn't get him off my rod holder, did you? Yeah, we did. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. He goes, why'd you give it to him? Right, you know? exactly. Why? So we get done with all that. We end up in second place in Frankfurt. And then we go to the Monster and we end up winning the, the cup. And what I got out of all this is, is the Lord is awful good to me. And if you guys don't believe in the Lord, I'm telling you what, you had to be on that boat this year. It was, it was unbelievable. And I just, it, it's better to have the Lord in your boat and win than think that you're good because you ain't that good. Yeah. And it just, it, it, I floated all that whole, and I'm, I feel great now. And the doctors say, I don't have no more inside me. I'm doing from stage four, you know, there ain't mm -hmm. no stage five, right? Stage four and psh, you're done. Yeah. You know, so, uh, I don't know how much longer I got on the surf, but. That made it easy. I can go any day now, and I know I'm. Get a few. I'm, you get a I few more memories in the bank, don't you? You're right. Yeah. Right, and I and I might have a second chance to come back here and tell everybody, seek the Lord with all your heart. Well, how, that. that is an amazing story, Mark, and uh, you leave me at a loss for words. How I even want to follow up on anything like that. I mean, that's that's pretty pretty incredible. At the end of the day, you know, I got a friend across the lake. He says, Mark, you're in the fourth quarter of life. You know, he wants to help me because he, he doesn't want to see me do all what I did. I love doing this, and I love doing this for all you guys out there. I want to make it a better fishing world. What can I leave, you know, to help other people? What, you know, so, you know, all I got to say is that he's the Lord's real and just seek him. And, and you know what? It, the more you look for him, the more he'll look for you. If you just, you know, don't don't wait. Stick your nose out there and... It's a great life. The sun's more shiny. It's more brighter. It's a better world. Well said, so, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Well, well said. You know, I saw somebody the other day talk about, you know, when you watch a video on YouTube and say a guy throws a cake up in the air and they freeze that video in mid-frame, are you the person that wants to see that cake fall on that person so you can laugh at him? Or are you the person that wants to see him catch that cake so you can applaud him? And that's a real interesting way. I, it got me thinking about some things. You know, what kind of people are around in the world? Yeah. Right. Do you right. want to see people succeed? Do you want to be that person that has a little brighter outlook? Or do you go around waiting for people to, to have a failure just so you can you can laugh at Well, it? I think we all start off and we go through right, rough things. I used to be a bass player in a rock and roll band playing at the bars and doing, you know, being on the wild side. Then as Judas, life Pri goes Judas by, Priest, wasn't it? Yeah, I played a lot of stuff, man. I, yeah. <laughs> you got another thing coming. I did all that stuff, right? So uh, I, ju I just, it, this is a way better life. And you know, what's going on in Israel and all that trouble, I don't, we live in such a fine community and my wife last night was watching Fiddler on the Roof, you know. Mm -hmm. she, yeah. But anyway, at the end of the Fiddler on the Roof, all he is is carrying a, a like a wheelbarrow backwards with everything he owns on the back. Mm -hmm. We are so blessed. Yeah. We get to go fishing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're see so the sunrise blessed. every morning and see it set is truly amazing Not a bad. I'm, I'm from the water i mean it's a, a sight that people i mean they just never experience it you know every day like we do as yeah. fishermen it's not a bad gig it is no. not a bad gig at all so one thing we are going to do on this uh, live stream we're going to talk some tournament tactics with these guys if you look behind them you're going to see a bunch of gear back there Mr. Chimura has devoted a lifetime to developing some of the best rod holders on the market. They're absolutely amazing. I've got to play with them a little bit here in the shop. We're going to let everybody see those things, talk about them. We're going to let you know if you want to purchase some of those, we're going to tell you how to do that also. So let's, uh, let's talk tournament tactics a little. Let's, um, let's just break this down to the easiest way. So when you guys are ready to go do a tournament, what's the first, say the tournament is on Friday, it's Monday. What do you do throughout that week? Well, I'm, I'm a charter fisherman, so mm -hmm. that's what I do for a living, and so I fish every day. Yep. Um, now, when I fish just a you know a normal charter, I'm not really worried about all the details. Mm -hmm. The week going into a tournament, about four days before, then I go into, like he said, accumulating all the the knowledge of 
where the currents are, what yep. they're going to do, what the winds are going to do the next four days, mm -hmm. where the water is temperature wise. And, you know, I try to stay on the fish. Mm -hmm. um, as we all know, there's a lot of fish out there, but they seem to be in groups. You know, you'll have a big pot of fish that may be down by Big Point, and then two days later, it's all the way up to Manistee. So yeah. every day, those fish, you know, they could move anywhere from, you know, two to eight miles a day. So, okay. so if you, Mark, if you weren't a charter captain, Lenny, if you guys weren't charter captain, I'll throw this to Mark, though. If you were not a charter captain and not fishing every day, you were a weekend guy and you were going to fish a tournament on that weekend and it's Monday, what do you what do you recommend people do? So uh, you mean they're going to come up Friday night? Yep. And fish they're going to come up Monday. They're going to be in Manistee all week long, um, starting on Monday through the weekend. Oh, okay. So they got five days of pre-fishing. Exactly. Okay, I, I can tell you pretty much what one boat used to do all the time. Best chance. I mean, I used to watch them guys. I do it a little different than mm -hmm. them, but what they would do is they would start off at if they're going to fish out of Manistee, they'd start off at the point of Point Savo and they would work that for a day. Then the next day they would start from the 15s to in front of Onekama. Then the following day they'd go from Onekama past Arcadia. Then the following day they'd go farther and they would evaluate where them fish are. But And they would win a lot doing that. Mm -hmm. But there's the fish, you know, to stay on big fish, uh, they move and they stay on the leading front, the leading edge. If there's a leading edge of water temp change or currents, they're on the leading edge. Okay. And for for uh, you to stay consecutive and keep going and and, and uh, don't run somebody else's program. You you get stuff working and you know what works and what don't. In five days, you, you'll find out what's working and what isn't. So uh, you go out there and you beat the pavement and, and you learn. You know, and, and you, you learn where that big group of fish is, and then you, you can kind of keep track of where they're going. If you're out there every day, mm -hmm. you know, you know if the wind's coming out of the south, the current's blowing out of the south, then fish are going to move north, and, and vice versa. And if it comes east, they're going to go west. So all the simple things that, that you know, people don't put into to account because they, they, they just are going to go fishing. Yeah. You know, yep. we got, we got, Lenny got told that, uh, that he did something that wasn't really good, but he said that uh, when he went and weighed his three, three, three fish, he waited till about half of them were done, mm -hmm. just to see about what sizes they are. Yeah, not trying to beat a guy here, or beat a guy there, but that's just a small detail. So if you don't pay attention to small details, they end up being, you know, just you know, you, oh. you're not doing good. When, so, when you're out there every day, yeah, I mean, you can pretty much tell what size class of fish you have. Mm -hmm. You know, last year was 20 to 25. That was what our year class fish of the, the matures were. The year before was 27 to 33 yep. to 35 pounds. Yep. So every year you're going to have to, you know, evaluate what kind of size structure we have out there in the lake. Yeah, absolutely. I recall one time a no-call tournament. So I was... Uh, I was in the Dominican Republic for a week. No calls, so there's no upgrades. So, right. Well, you kept you got you catch ten fish. You're you done. come in with those ten fish. Right. Okay, and that's it. You can't. Okay. So I come back from Dominican Republic, and I'm in the tier, and I got a charter, and we're going to fish the tournament. So we're in this tournament. <laughs> there you, hi, folks. We're in, we're in this tournament, and uh, attention to detail. I get down to the sixes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fish because I like that water, and I'm thinking that's where they'd be. I put all my lines down, so I got nine. We didn't, you know, nine rods down. Took about seven minutes, and I was done with. I had these on every rod. Sure, yeah. it was over with, you know. So, yeah, finding the big fish, staying on the big fish. It's not yeah. as easy as it sounds, everybody. So, what uh, you talking about? Staying on the edge, finding the edge. That's where the big fish like to be on the leading edge of the currents and the temps. If uh, you could give advice to anybody, Lenny, on how they could go about doing that. What would you say? Well, I mean, the, the day of computers is huge now. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to Coast Watch and you can pull up surface temps, the currents. Yeah. Um, you know, and just kind of track. Like I said, if, if you're going to fish, you know, whether you're a weekend fisherman or a tournament fisherman, you can go out and you can kind of keep track every day what's going on with the water prior to you going out fishing. So you can actually evaluate what's going on right from home and it's almost as good as being out in the water if you look at those details. Yeah, I can yeah. actually see it. Out yeah, there. he'll yeah. call me up. Out. He'll be like, "Are you? I bet you I know where you are." I'm like, "Well, what do you mean?" 
Oh, you're in the 11s right now and probably 150 foot. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because, I mean, he's looking right at the computer and it's telling him that. Sure. But that, before we didn't have computer, you know, so. That's different. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and in the early days, we used to do a lot of steelhead fishing, which it doesn't happen now. And mm -hmm. it's kind of good because everybody's crying about steelhead in the river and everything. And, I mean, we used to have, every boat used to go out and get 15 fish right. a day with, like, no problem. But you learn a lot by doing that too. You learn a lot about the currents and a lot about the right. the the water flipping over and the slicks that are out there and the the birds. There's birds are way fishermen than better than they're we better are. than we are, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And they're there for a reason, you know. Yep. They they know how to get their food because they depend on it. Yeah. Yeah. They they have to be better than we are. So if you were uh, if you were to give one bit of advice to anybody, then what I'm gleaning off all this is pre fish. If you got four or five days before a tournament. Get out there and fish, fish as yeah, much as you can. It, you know what? If Billy Bob tells you to go over here and then Johnny tells you to go over here and what's his name tells you to go over here and you're on the phone doing this, I, you can ask every one of my first mates. I've had a lot of them. And you can ask every one of them, stay off the phone. Don't. And I, I love everybody. But you know what? If you go after somebody else's fish, you are... I mean, you, you can't stay con consistent that way. There's no way. It's impossible. No, I, I agree. So I was going to ask you, what's your thoughts on networking and when it comes to it. tournament time? I know don't you don't. Do it. Lenny, you got her. Uh... Well, you know, everybody, you know, has a small circle. Some people have bigger circles. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fortunate enough where I work with usually three or four guys. So most of the time, just a couple. Yeah. And I figure if I'm on the water every day and they're on the water every day, that's as tight as a circle needs to be. But if you, if you don't, you know, if you don't have that real tight inner circle where you know they're going to give you the, you know, the best information, yeah. yep. you know, Facebook, you know, social media, yeah. if you track, you can pretty much tell the Kings are in Grand Haven based off of all the posts, if they're, you know, making their way up the coast and where they are just by, you know, the buzz. If, are they over in Wisconsin, big post over there? Yep. So, you know, I kind of, I watch that, plus I'm out there every day, you know, and just kind of... Yeah. Stay here's dialed a, here's in the on. other thing. How many fishermen actually give you true reports? Well, that's that's yeah. the uh, that's, that's the big question, well, isn't it, yeah. Mark? Oh, yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. It's gigantic. I mean, yeah, I lost a tournament one time, or we lost a tournament, I should say, because we fished. Somebody called us, said, "Hey, they're at the pierheads. We needed two more good fish." And we're like, "Okay, if they're there, we're going." And we lost because of that. Yeah. If we'd stuck it out where we were and caught two more lake trouts, at and the eight, other nine thing pounds, is when that when you're in a tournament and you run, that clock is spinning, man. Is. I mean, it's going. Yeah. It's like. Yep. You know, a lot of times I'll just stay batted down. I won't even go in for trout. I mean, if if, if I if I get one or two trout out where I'm at, mm -hmm. or at least one, mm -hmm. I'll stay there for the duration. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. So it comes tournament time. What are you guys thinking for spreads? What are, what are you guys, some of your favorite, Mark, we'll start with you. Meat well, rigs, plugs, spoons, flash it, or fly? It depends what time of year it is. It depends what we did the week before. There's a, a couple spoons that are my favorite. Silver with a green diagonal tape. That's my favorite. It's called the F11. The F11. Yeah. Is that an old I, Northport nailer? No, it's an old a Big John one. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So The yeah. internet right now is, everybody is searching F11 spoon right now, I right. guarantee it. So that right there. And then the flies and the meat, it, it all depends on what, what you've been getting them, mm -hmm. what, what, what's been working. I mean, every season has its season. Every time has its time. And... Uh, there's so much good stuff. I got a whole bunch of stuff in my boat that I'll never use. And I, I might I, know. Yeah. And, and, right. But but uh, if you had to put one thing down or, you know, you got a spoon, you got a fly, and you got a meat rig, you got a plug, you know. A plug doesn't necessarily have to go out in August. Mm -hmm. You can put them out earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, when I was uh, catching fish really deep, like 600 and some feet down, I did it within fishermen. 637 foot was the deepest one that I caught. And I caught a lot of them down there. But I caught them on plugs down there. Because if you put a flasher down there, you, it's going to put your stuff too far back. Okay. You know, so. So I kind of yeah. break it down into like three different segments of the season. Um, I usually drop my boat in in April, um, first week of April. And pretty much the whole first week um, of April all the way to the first week of May is spoons. You know, you're, you're going to be fishing skinny water, cold mm -hmm. water. Um, the fish, you know, the water's 42, 40 degrees, 43 degrees. So it's a spoon pro program mm -hmm. for the whole first month. And then usually right around the first week of May until the middle of June, I like running 
flashers and flies. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I got on board with salmon candy this year, and mm -hmm. I ran 50% <laughs> of my spread was always salmon candy with rapture trolling flies. Um, Mark can contest, you know, to the rapture trolling flies. They're they good are, flies. They're, that's all I use. I, that's all I use for 30-some years. Yes. Matter of fact, remember catch them, Ken? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Ken of course. Ken says, Mark, come over to my side and use my flies. I'll name one after you. I said, Ken, I can't do that to Jeff. And Jeff, if you're out there, you never named a fly after me. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, yeah, Jeff has some good stuff. So be consistent, you know, and every fly has its own little, uh, I mean, they're the profile of a fly. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're a little bit thicker, some of them. Some of them are a little bit thinner. Rapture is really consistent with the flies, and so you can be consistent with your program. Mm -hmm. If you're running four different makes of flies on a, off a flasher, even at the same length, that fly is going to act different than if you, you run all the same You're absolutely brand. right, yeah. So what I've learned is just, you know, use Rapture. And then, you know, last year um, I was always Pro King, and then I got on Sam McCandy's mm -hmm. um, Pro Staff, and... There's so many color schemes and stuff. You know, it's it's kind of a trial and error. You got to use different um, color combinations when the water's at certain temperatures, and sure. they, some work better than others. Can you can you name some of your favorite combinations, or is that uh, wait we, wait a minute? Hi, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's there's so many of them. What what I do is you know in that month I told you about mm -hmm. first week of May until probably about the middle of June, Chrome um, is really good. And any greens, blues, mm -hmm. I, I I tend to go to more of the the natural colors, not the real gaudy colors at that point yeah. in that season, just because those fish are not in an aggressive mode right. like they are when you get into that July, late July, August. Right. So I tend to you know gravitate towards this the more chromes, blues, greens. Um, keep it, it simple. Yeah, keep it simple, and um, once mid June hits in the water temperature which is real crucial, when the water temperature gets on the surface around 60 degrees, high 50s, mm -hmm. then I, I tend to go more towards the meat. Okay. And that's usually somewhere around the middle of June. Okay. And then, you know, it's it's meat pretty much all the way through the rest of the season for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, familiar bite, um, we, we got on their pro staff last year too, and they're coming out that they're going to be certified here in the Great Lakes here in good. Michigan. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Um, this year, and that's all we've used. I mean, that's he, all he's a good used. man. I I've been with him for a lot of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a. I remember I actually helped him formulate the stuff. You know, he would send me some. And, no, that ain't it. Yeah, no, that. <laughs> Chris, my wife said, Mark, would you quit that? You're you're killing that guy. Finally, one day, probably the sixth or seventh time. I said, whatever you did to this batch, it's perfect. You know, it's Are nice you and kidding? Firm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And it, and Tastes it is. Tastes good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll, he's yeah. Been One of the tournaments I had it hanging out of my mouth. I have no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. I have absolutely no doubt on But that. usually mid-July to August, all the way through August, you know, a lot of dream weavers. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, what he's used, that's what I've used. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, you know, John King, mm -hmm. the big blades, 11-inch. Mm -hmm. Sam and Candy, they have the, the big... Big blade too. Big weenie as well, yeah. and big weenie. Yeah. You know what? Ones. I love them all. Dreamweaver, yeah. Russell. They all they all have Jeff. their they have their, their place. place. Yeah, Stinger, they do. I was really close to the stinger from Terry, the family. You know, and yeah. they all of them work, and you'll find your favorite colors or the one that works the best, and you put that in that pile, and then you fish, and then this this works. This plug yeah. is number one. So everybody gets their their number one stuff. You know, so. It, the, the biggest thing that, you know, a guy wants to, to go, you just got to put your time in and you got to figure it. out your currents, figure out your temperatures, mm -hmm. figure out where that break is, figure out the wa water clarity. There's like half a dozen things that are staples every day yeah. you do. Right. And I don't like going into the current. I like to go with the current. And you can't always do it, but if you go with the current, you're flying and you're taking over a lot of turf. True. If you turn back this way, you're wallowing like you're like you're a, a two-wheel drive pickup truck pulling a, a ton well, of your, stuff. Your whole spread lifts up when that current and you're going into it. You can't be consistent in that zone as much as when you're going at a you know even a fast pace. Everything is working mm -hmm. though yeah. in that zone. So you turn around and you think you're in that zone still, but you're not. You're not See, anymore. Like no. the, yeah. down south, I mean, they don't. I don't know if their currents are. They get strong currents close in. Don't believe me. I know that, but. 
when you're way out, if you're on our shelf, that water's spurling around and it comes in and hits the shelf and it's really flying in. So you either got to get above the shelf or get out from there. And that's, you know, where you find the fish. Don't stay in that real, real fast current because you're, it's going to be a long day for yeah, you. Yeah, the fish aren't going to want to stay in there anyway. It's going to tire right. them out. They want to be able the to rest. And, either. Yeah, exactly. Right. You got to yeah. kind of get fishy in your mind. The river helps you learn that stuff too, yeah. you know. Yeah. Look for the seams, look for the yep. currents. Yeah. Yep. yeah, excellent, excellent information, guys. Um, and I completely agree with you on the uh, the selection of lures. It's easy to be that Chevy Ford Dodge guy where I'm sticking with that one thing and that's my thing. More than likely, everybody out here that we're talking to right now, each one of them have a favorite. Mm -hmm. And it, so is it your bait that you're presenting? Hmm, it's your speed, your bait, how fast you're going, the number of fish that are located there and uh, what it takes to get them aggressive, what mm -hmm. it takes to get them going. You might have to speed it up a little bit, whip the boat a little bit left and right. Some days they like it really slow. How many times have I sat up? I have two or three rods in the water. Boom, we got a fish. So I, I think that's cool. I can put it in. I'm hardly moving, and you get fish. Mm -hmm. And then one time I seen a bunch of fish jumping and diving and all up. So I'm trying to get to them. So I speed it up. I'm going like six seven. I get a big king on it. Six seven. Six seven. Six point seven miles an hour. And With I got spoon. Him. And yeah. I got him. With a spoon. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean those fish, they 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 swim so fast. You oh, without if, a doubt. If, yeah. if you have spoons on, I I got towed in once. I broke down out like on the thirty five line, and I was getting towed in, and I was like, you know, I might as well throw some spoons out. I threw some spoons out. We we're doing four and a half, five miles an hour, and I was catching fish, and the guy towing me in. You know, he's like, "What are you doing back there? This ain't fair." You know, I'm towing you in. You're catching fish. <laughs> might as you well, know? might as well use the time as you can. Yeah. Hey, Ryan purchased that, just asked a really good question. I'm going to wait to the end of this, Ryan, to ask that to these guys. But uh, if you got questions like that, everybody, just wait to the end and we'll get some time for that. But uh, let's uh, let's keep talking some tournament stuff here. So I like what you're telling everyone about, you know, it depends on the time of the year, if we're going to fish spoons, if we're going to fish meat, if we're going to fish plugs, et cetera, et cetera. Have you found over tournament times that one particular style catches bigger fish than others? Say meat catches bigger fish over spoons or spoons catch me and so on and so on I, for me myself 11 o'clock quarter to 12 dog day you know meat to me is the best okay and uh but i mean i've won tournaments in three foot of water and i won tournaments really deep mm -hmm. and every day is different mm -hmm. and when you're when you're you know look for bait I mean, look for bait. Mm -hmm. it, that that's like, it's like, uh, it's like, it's a it, that's a. It's food. To, yeah, yeah, it's that, food. Yeah, and that's that's gigantic. So I mean, if you like look at a McDonald's, if you look at a McDonald's, there's plenty of people around. I know McDonald's. the parking lot's full. Right. But in the springtime, you'll be going in ice cold water, and you look in your graph, and it's bluer than blue. You don't see nothing on there. Well, them fish aren't there. They're either really really deep, mm -hmm. or they're 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 found a little patch of warmer water. So, yeah. you know, every time the wind blows, depending on whatever direction, it's pushing the water out, bringing it in, flipping it over, you know. And, and that's where these big river systems that we have in Lake Michigan are, are crucial to mm -hmm. catching kings. They're nutrients, bait fish eat the nutrients, mm -hmm. the kings, they collect around the river mouse. I mean, whether it's five miles to each side of it, You want to hear something even really out. crazy? Okay. If you're in the harbor of Manistee and the wind is blowing out of the south, coming from the south of the the plume that comes out of Manistee Lake mm -hmm. in the river, it goes out far enough that it's out on the shelf. And you can tell by the wind and by that and the discolor of water way, way out there. Mm -hmm. It's not like the Grand River. You know, Grand is pretty. Yeah. So you can tell way out there. So that's a telltale right there. Yeah, yeah good that's advice. Like, that's inviting them right there. You no, know? no doubt about it. Yeah. Lenny, what about you? Have you found over the years that one certain style of uh, presentation catches bigger fish over others? Well, once again, I, I mean, I use, bait, that, when I told you, flies, mm -hmm. meat, J-plugs. J-plugs, pretty much from, I mean, the last week of August until the middle of September, mm -hmm. those fish really aren't eaten. I mean, right. they, their mouths, their throats are closed off. Right. So the, the meat really... They, when they hit it, they're getting a lot of outside the mouth. They're just striking at it. Yeah. That's where, you know, J plugs those those three weeks there. 
I mean, are you live really and die good. with them. Yeah, you know? really, really good. So, I mean, meat overall, I mean, like Mark said, from June, July, and August, I'm a meat guy. Mm -hmm. When August comes along, when, you know, a lot of times you throw the temperature away because some kings are going to yeah. come in. But if you get them kings in August in 49 degree water, oh, that's yeah. your magic right you Better there. hang on. Oh, yeah. 49 yeah. degree is, is where they're at. Yep. So I don't care how deep that is. I don't care if it's three feet down or I don't care if it's, you know, 120 feet to, to whatever. Mm -hmm. That's where they're at. Those fish will cook, you know, in 65 degree water. Yep. You know, they get really warm, warm, warm. Mm -hmm. And like he said, they want to cool down. So if you can find that 49 degree water underneath that warm water, they're going to go down and they're going to chill off. And, and they, they know they need to start staying out of that water, mm -hmm. into that warmer water more and more because they're going to run the rivers. But that 49 degree has always been my number. Yeah. Not 52, not 47. I mean, I've caught them in colder water and I caught them in warmer. But I mean, at day in and day out, you set your one rigger at, 50, at 49 degrees. That's and, your and, that's your honey pot, and then you yeah, yeah and then you then you learn with that. I mean, all of a sudden it'll be cold. What, Lenny, what you did you put that down? Yeah, I put it down. <laughs> I'm trying because when you go out, that 49 will if you say 49 is at 50 feet, mm -hmm. so you leave it at 50 feet. When you start going out, then it'll start rising, yep. and or vice versa. So you you have to try to figure that that gives you something to figure out right there. Right. So just keep looking for that 49. Even Great. when you're out fishing steelhead way out. Great advice, guys. Really appreciate that. I'm sure everybody out there appreciates that as well. So, um, nine rod spread. We, what didn't do you... even, we didn't even run nine rods. We usually run usually six, maybe seven, but okay. we hardly ever, you know, get nine. Um, and that's just, I don't like, you know, running boards. Okay. He, he likes boards, you know, like the big boards. Mm -hmm. I put them on the boat this year and at the end of the season. And, um, I just have so many problems getting tangled. You know, if you get those big kings on that streak out into that board, mm -hmm. your 400s or your 300s, and you could lose a fish in the tournament just because you had that one out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I just, my whole program is based on a so six rod spread. I'm, th I'm, th hold on, I'm throwing the brakes on real okay. quick here, guys, because people I know they were going to want to hear this. You can run nine rods in a tournament, but right. you guys don't run nine rods. We run six. You run six. What, so it's normally what? Okay, if we're running two divers on each side mm -hmm. and two riggers, okay? Yep. So if a rigger goes, we got another one go down there while we're fighting that one. Good idea. If a diver goes, we got another diver to yep. replace that one. Replace as when soon as you can. Fish, yeah. when these you can fish have are, two fish on, plus have six rods in, and you got eight rods actually in the water. When exactly. these fish are hot and going at it, and we got them out, we can turn on them. We're not going to run over our other lines and all that. Or and, boats. And, you know, if, if we're at a, in the Dead Sea, then, yeah, we'd probably add more rods. Mm -hmm. But... If you keep those going, and another big thing is separate yourself. Don't let one bait see the other bait. Don't okay. let a fish have to make a decision on what he wants. Just give him one down that zone and one way, you know, spread your stuff out so that they What would you recommend as far as distance in between your spread? We put the divers at three okay, and one and a half, and then just your regular two riggers usually like he said one one rigger will be you know at temp 49 degrees and the other one you just you're, you're messing with it you know going up okay. and down you know that's your kind of your your, your probe rigger you're just kind of looking and at i always searching. put one longer way longer than the other one you know you ever hear the secret weapon rig oh of course I did that, that that was me the swr yeah. yes that, that should stand yes. for mark chamura no it's it's not but it, it was <laughs> and uh when you're out there, you're always trying to find a loophole or something that you can, you know, to, to, to do. You know, bringing, bringing divers in by your hand? Mm -hmm. You're the guy, huh? I have you to thank for all those headaches that I've had? Yeah, it's stupid, isn't it? It works. What had happened, I, was, I had a rigger out and I had it 20, 25 feet behind the boat. And it kept on going. So I took my high diver and I put one out there. Because we, what we used to do is you put your hook on your on your top of your reel and your diver would be at the tip right so you done. can net it or vice versa put, put the diver down here wrap it one time put the diver here and put your spoon that part mm -hmm. that's all we used to do yeah and it, when i started doing that when i was coming it was it was them fit yeah it was good i was i was either using a beckhold white or beckhold the green big beckhold white that's with a good a, with a hypnotist mm -hmm. it's all i mean 
Yeah. Is he sliding out? I know. Again, right? Hi, folks. I'm back. He's <laughs> back again. Back. That's why I got I to deal with this guy. He's always off. Well, I like screen. to look at somebody when I'm talking to him, and I know there's a bunch of you out there. So, so I get it. You say you're stagging your riggers as far as length on your leads. What's your normal lengths? Some of them I'll, I'll put out 120 feet behind the boat, and other, mm -hmm. other times 15 feet behind the boat. With 120 feet behind, do you, do you strictly stay with spoons on that, or I, are you comfortable? I go with a smaller bait. Okay. You know? You put something big there. If a fish is shy, then he's got that back there to look it's at. It's like a J plug. If you put it out 100 feet, it's going to actually dive deeper than your ball. Mm -hmm. the, you know, J plugs will actually dive a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, spoons. Sometimes if you get too far out there, I mean, it, they'll be, they'll be way up in the air then. So a lot of times, if I'm targeting fish in 49 degrees, I'll put my rigger down. You know. 20 foot below that 49 degrees and that spoon, if you let them out 150 feet, it's going to flutter it's, up. It's right up in the zone then. So it's it's all about attention to detail. It is, yeah. Uh, everything that you do out on the big lake is the little stuff makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I like I like big boards versus the little boards because here's the little boards and here's the big boards. Ooh, that, I had an opportunity. Bam! Yeah, yeah, the, no, but your, your spread <laughs> is way out there. And the other thing is, especially when you're in skinny water, you got them little boards on top of the fish. If you're in 8, 10, 15 foot of water, you know, if you have the big ones out there, there's nothing there. Between and I, get, I get, I get yeah. way more fish that way. Okay. And you don't realize how far your boards are back. You think that they're really far out there, the little boards, mm -hmm. where in reality, they're only half of what it would be if you. Yeah, had they're on a boards. forty-five degree angle, pretty mm -hmm. much. They are. So, You're right. You yeah. know, and it, I don't know if you, you know, most of the fishermen have noticed this, but that's why I don't run boards, those little boards, because I swear, just like a, a king or a steelhead in the river will go towards a log or mm -hmm. something in the water. Mm -hmm. I've had it more times than not; those big kings will go right towards that board. It's yeah. like they see the board and they're he like, "He knows it too. He's yeah. going. They're gonna go to the board. I'm like, Even Bark. before they take up, he's gonna hit the board. He's gonna go to the board. <laughs> they go right for the board." It's like it's I don't know. They're looking for something. It's a bullseye. And it's the only right? thing out there. All right. Yeah. So less is more for you guys. You're running six rods primarily. If it's working. You know that yeah. if you if you're out there for an hour and you ain't right. got nothing, well, then, then you then. then you start thinking of what else you can put out there because it leaves you open. open. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love we've done this before in tournaments as well, and I love that concept is leave a rod out so when you're fighting a fish, you can have another rod ready to go back in. And yeah. don't think that you're going to tell a fish what he's doing. Them fish are going to tell you what they're doing. Yeah, I completely and agree you with you on that. Kind of pay attention to that. Completely agree with yeah. you on that one. So let's uh, let's piggyback off a couple of things you guys were just talking about. It's 9:30, 10 o'clock in the morning now. Morning bite is done. Where are we doing? Where are we going? I like to go out where nobody's at. I I, I venture out and I I get away from the tracks that were laid down from the morning troll. So. Uh, why is that, Mark? Well, because the vulnerable ones already bit, and the other ones either dropped or headed out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to sit there and pound pavement with nothing there, so I'm searching. Yeah. And I search in unfished water. Mm -hmm. So I want to stay away from the, the tracks that were laid down by other do you, boats. Do you think other boats can drive fish away from areas? Do you think boat traffic can push fish? Yeah. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I rather, you know, I have a little, this is getting off the beaten path, but I I have a, uh, a little rowboat that I'll fish out in my lake here. I don't want to know this lake too good because of, I don't want to, you know, so I go out there. And, but anyways, all I use is my iPad. So there's no graph in the water that, that's piercing the fish, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they pierce the fish. So I don't have that. So I can, I can catch a lot of fish out there. I know the spots and I use my, you mm -hmm. know, GPS coordinates to put me on top of little islands and I so know no, you're I'm not at. running any sonar whatsoever you're just right. looking at GPS on your right. iPad so now if you have all these sonars in the lake and one's one of his buddies just got taken away and the other where's his aunt at or whatever you know and and there's all kinds of commotion going on mm -hmm. you're gonna drive them down drive them out but but if, if you notice every everybody stops it's kind of it's over with mm -hmm. you know Oh, in Wisconsin, in Door County, in, in Sturgeon Bay, they'll uh, they get up way earlier than we do, and they 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 pretty much call it as it's still dark out. I mean, they're out there at three thirty in the morning, and uh, and they're 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 done at nine thirty, ten mm -hmm. o'clock. So they don't venture out. First time over there, went over there and won a tournament. 
the girls, my, my wife and my sister, I had a customer that was supposed to come, he passed away. He's, they called in sick, and I drove all the way over there. I'm thinking, sure. Then I found out a few days later oh, he man. died. Oh, he, he was a kid. <laughs> but anyways, my wife and sister and one of my first mates, we ended up staying there, and uh, we won that one by like 65 pounds. But they didn't even know what a probe was. So mm -hmm. I'm like, that that's not really fair. That's a little you know? unfair, sure. So, I mean, we have all these all this equipment and such a big lake. There's nothing out of bounds out there. Everything's open. Everything, right. you know. Well, Wisconsin, we can't go over there anymore. Yeah. I yeah, mean, some tournaments. No, no, mixed, no. But what, yeah, I, what, what I, mean, right? I mean, what I mean is just because the water's deeper doesn't mean the fish aren't there. Right. Kevin Lenny, what about you? It's now 11 o'clock, 11 a.m., the morning bite's off. What are you doing? I mean, I'm a little different than Mark. I mean, we may be a lot. Mark's a little different than everybody. Mark's different than, but <laughs> I, what I usually do is, you know, um, if, if you're in 150 foot of water first thing in the morning and you're you're whacking on fish and, the, and I look at the temperature and everything's set up perfect, you got bait, you got temperature, Everybody, all of a sudden, a lot of times you'll be out trolling. There's bait balls up up high. Then all of a sudden, like you said, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, everything's just <clears throat> gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times the bait, they'll go right to the bottom. They'll, they'll go down deep. And a lot of times the fish are laying, the, the kings will be laying right on bottom. And mm -hmm. they don't, you know, sometimes they'll move out in the deeper water, but sometimes they're right on bottom. Sometimes they'll slide up into that 100 foot, 120 foot where that temperature meets the shelf right there and they'll be up real tight mm -hmm. pushing that bait that drove down and up into that so a lot of times i'll go once everybody kind of like spreads out i'll mm -hmm. go in even shallower and find a ton of fish sitting right on the bottom right on the bottom yeah. where the bait is then. yep so. absolutely and that temperature drives that yep. as well i like what you just said right yep. there couldn't agree with you guys more and there's everybody so you saw i mean two very experienced guys here doing it two different ways no way is really more right than the other way. It's just um, two different ways. The, the details, just the, you know, try and that's like Mark said, you always got to try your thing. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, you know, 60 to 90 foot is where you were getting them in the morning and keep all your stuff right there. You know, move it down a little deeper, move in deeper, <laughs> move out deeper. So let me just ask if there's seagulls in the garage. It's the chair oh, yeah. squeaking over there. We got somebody over here on the side that's uh, in a rocking chair. No, he's fine. <laughs> People just think it's seagulls. All right, so day one's over. You guys are in third place, but you're within striking distance. You know, you're within 15 pounds of the number one boat. You doing anything different on day two? No. 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 Sticking with the same programs. Same, yeah. Do the same thing. and Because uh... I'm asking this question because I think that's where a lot of tournaments are lost. People think they're, they're in third place, fourth place. They think they got to get that special fish or two. And they got to do something different. There's two two guys, and one used to fish with me, Jack on Jackpot from Ludington. And Jack used to fish with me in the younger days, you know, and uh, he was fishing Ludington tournament. This is seven, eight years ago. And uh, they come in and I, at amateur boat. They're in first place. And they're drinking too much because they're celebrating. Mm -hmm. Then they come to realization, we got to fish tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So they come over to my boat. And they're half lit, you know, and we're confused, man. We don't know what to do tomorrow. I go, what? We don't know what to do tomorrow, man. We're nervous. It's. I said, you know what? Just go to the same spot you mm -hmm. were at today and do the same thing. Yeah. You're freaking brilliant. <laughs> 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 well, he's half and they right. went out and they won. Did they? You know, yes, they, they won. And then they, they were carrying that I can do it sign from the bank. They must have took it from the bank. Oh, my or God. Whatever. But oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it was hilarious. All right. So, yeah, day two, if you're, if, if you're in the hunt, stick with what you got. And the other thing, if you are leading after day one, don't let it get to you. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, because. There was you, one, the one tournament. Days, he was, he was, I didn't fish with him the first day. And I had a charter and I couldn't get away from it. And this was like probably six years ago. And he was like 80 pounds in, in first place. I mean, he crushed it the first day. So I go out with him the second day, and we set up, and it was like six footers. I Why mean, you got to tell him this? Because <laughs> this is very important. Now I, now I got to hear this. So we were in six footers, and one of his motors wasn't running, and his, his, his port engine wasn't running, only a starboard. The wind was out of the southwest, and we, we, we made the first pass, and we had like six fish. And this was the Manistee Tournament. All we needed to get do was just get ten fish. Mm -hmm. and we, and you know you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So 
we got, we, I mean, we hammered him, and I was like, we need to pull lines. We need to go back there, and we need to do it again. And he's like, no, nah, we're going to get our four fish if we just keep going. I don't want to go do all that. And needless to say. It got worse and worse, and I only had one motor, and you couldn't turn yeah. that thing and go into it. Yeah. wanted to drift you out. And so. we ended up losing, you know, we placed second by like 10 points. Oh, gee. You know, and it was one of those things where, you know, like you said, you know, sometimes you, you, you got to do something that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and last year we pulled lines a you're, couple you're, different times. You never, ever stop learning. No, you, you don't. Without never, a doubt. No. Yep. You never when the going gets bad. I'm learning things just sitting here listening and to you guys right now. that's what makes you better yeah. every time you don't do something right. It's something you can do next time. Right. Yeah. 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 You, you, I, the best teachers, I think, are, are pain and loss. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you, I, re, I remember when I first started chartering. I, I'm, I'm hard-headed. I mean, I am hard-headed. This poor family, I wrecked them. We left in Ma at Manistee, and we went, and I stayed in like 80 or 90 foot, right? All day long, I went all the way to the point, turned back around, and came off. I didn't try anything different. But, I, you know, and... Stubborn. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I kept them out there 12, 13 hours. I mean, it was, <laughs> this, wasn't, this wasn't no three-hour tour. You know, I kept we them out there for a long time. <laughs> we just yeah. want to go home. Yeah. Here's no. the money. Here's no. the money. Take our money. <laughs> just put us on the shore right here. We'll walk. But, I mean, you, and what I meant by even saying that is you're going to go through hard times, and it's part of the learning curve. Yeah. And then, and but unlike anything else that we do, these fish swim. They move. You can't see them. There's there's so many things that are against you, mm -hmm. you know. So and then you got to get them to open their mouth, you mm -hmm. know. It, it's not always easy, but uh, one thing we I've have always a blessed said. fishery. We have a really blessed fishery, and we have some, you know, those. There's a lot of hard decisions being done by the DNR. They're not. They don't want this to be, you know. They want it good for everybody. Mm -hmm. I agree and, with you. Uh, I agree yeah. with you. So one of the things when I first started doing this 20-some whatever years ago was I wanted to learn like that. So I went to people like you guys, and I asked the questions that I'm asking like now. And it just, it, I couldn't comprehend that I couldn't learn it within a weekend by reading a book or talking to these guys. It, I was stubborn like you were, Mark, I'm sure in a way. It took me a long time to learn that I had to put my dues in. I had to pay my dues. And if you're unwilling to do that, it's a short it's yeah. a short thing. Yeah, you're done. You know, yeah, you're, you're not going to be very successful. So yeah, right. I, I committed myself to learning from people like you guys and going out and working the water. That's the what taught thing, me more. Fishermen aren't truthful. That's they very are, true. They are not. They are, and nobody wants to get. Everybody's got their little secrets. Nobody wants to give it up. Mm -hmm. You know. So the best thing I can do is, I talk to people and all that. But if it's like I ain't heard from them in a year and they call me two days before the tournament, you know, and mm -hmm. they want to know, you know. That's like, you know, it's just, not that I don't love them, but Is it, come yeah. on, you know? You can call me a little more often yeah. than that, sure, yeah, so, without a doubt. Yeah. So day two comes, and you guys are now in 15th place, way out of first place. Doing anything different? No. I mean, if, if, if you're consistent, mm -hmm. I mean, just because you weren't on, you know, spot on the first day, doesn't mean you're not going to knock it, you know, the that's, ball out of the park the second day. That's why I had a lot to do with some of the second chances and stuff in the tournaments mm -hmm. because who wants, to, you know, especially in like the three 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 tournament, if you go and weigh your three fish on Saturday, you have no reason to go out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep them people out there fishing to enjoy the sport that they love. So that's why a big fish comes into factor or, or a lot of little different things that we've did in the right. past to try to keep the the angler fishing there. Right. You know. So that actually leads into a question I was going to ask. What's your decision process when it comes to weighing fish in the 333? Do you like to weigh all three fish on the first day, two fish on the first day, one fish? Does it matter? First of all, you have to know what the average is. In order to know what the average is, you have to watch the weigh-in a little bit. Well, like you were you talking know, about with Lenny earlier. I don't think we did the same thing. Scotty doesn't really like you doing that, but I mean... If if they're gonna do anything, they should have it sequestered. Yeah. Sequestered. He likes that word. That was my word of the year. Sequestered. He likes a sequester. Yeah, I was sequestering everything, <laughs> but sequestered. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're gonna do it that way, otherwise, if you don't pay attention to what other people are weighing, you're in left field. I mean, you you just you know you need to pay attention to detail, and that's that's a smart veteran move by doing that. You're absolutely right. So. It, that'll tell you how big the fish are. And then uh, weather factor for the following day will tell you. 
And uh, here's a good one. I have really good friends across the lake, and I, I fish all over the world with these guys. And uh, they have a boat over there in Wisconsin. And they are really, really good fishermen, but when it comes to going into a tournament, they just didn't do good. They, mm -hmm. you know, so they're going to come over here and they're going to fish the Onekama tournament when we had Onekama. When we had the, yeah. yeah. So they're going to come and fish it. So they asked me, Mark, will you go with us? I said, yeah, I'll go with you. And I says, but I can't fish Friday with you because I got charters. I, you know, that's okay. So I go with them on Saturday morning and I got some of my stuff, but I don't say a word. I'm not putting any of my, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy that comes in and say, Hey, you need to do that. So I just fished with them, right? I didn't put any, anything into it. So like tell them to put this color, put that color, do that. So we catch a bunch of nice fish. We come in and we had three of them and we thought about, should we weigh them all three? I said, yeah, you should weigh them all. Cause I looked around where they were. And the one guy that owned the boat says, eh, I think we should only do two. Jeff, I'm telling you, we should weigh all three of them. So we weigh all three of them, and then we had nothing to do on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I took them up the river in the jet boat. So we're playing around in the river while everybody's out, and it got rough. You know, it was ugly. Sunday was ugly. And uh, we go to the turn, we go to the weigh-in, and we ended up winning it. No and kidding. I didn't even fish on, you know. And so they're, they're talking to each other, and if Jeff comes up, Patty, that used to weigh the fish, mm -hmm. said to Jeff, you would have never won if Mark wasn't there. He looked at me and he goes, you ain't never fishing with me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lenny, what do you think? What's your strategy when it comes to 333? It's, it, it's all about, you know, what I what size fish the, the week going into the mm -hmm. tournament. I mean, if I catch, you know, 100 fish in that week and I look at the, the, the big upper end of the size, you know, and I look at the medium, mm -hmm. That tells me what I need to do. Yeah. If I can't, if if I can't get that average where I know I need to be, then I don't I don't weigh. You know, the first day. Sure. And you go all in the in the second day, mm -hmm. or or vice versa. If you do, have. Do you have a? I'm sorry, Mario. I mean, cut you off. Okay. But do you have a cutoff number in your mind that a fish has to be a certain amount for me to weigh that fish? Based on the the, the large largest fish I'm catching and the average size yes so okay. say if I, the biggest fish that week was 23 mm -hmm. and i got a 15 16 mm -hmm. and that was kind of the average if i know that I, i'll if i get a, like a 17 and a half or 18 and a half that's kind of in the middle if you know if, if the first day i might weigh one of those mm -hmm. if i didn't catch any other that size that way it leaves you it's some not, room it's not going to hurt you it's, in any way yeah it's not yeah. going to totally take you out All right so a, a funny tournament is manistees which, which one the, the Budweiser. Okay. Okay, because there's a lot of years that them kings aren't there. Absolutely. Yeah. And then there's years like this year that they were there. Mm -hmm. But when they were there this year, people didn't know about it because they hit and they get. So they come in pretty quick and they and then where they go, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, it's really, really hard to answer that question because like you have to know what is in the, in the vicinity. You mm -hmm. have to know what fish are swimming around there and if if them big kings aren't there well then you're you're messing with trout and well you know. like nobody saw i mean probably not that i weighed two 17 and a half the first day of the triport and the second day we caught three 21s mm. so we would have won the 333 mm -hmm. with 63 pounds but we, we had placed second because I went all in with two of them mm -hmm. instead of one of them. If I even would have done one, we would have won a lot it. of bad decisions. So those, <laughs> those are decisions that, you know, a 17 and a half going into that week was a good number. But all of a sudden, the second day, we, we, you know, we got into some big fish. Yeah. And so that could have cost us dearly there, but, it, you know, yeah. it only cost us one spot. I think that's the, that one of the hardest things you have to figure out in the 333 format is, what fish am I going to weigh? Where's my cutoff? We've won tournaments that way, and we've lost tournaments that way. So yeah, I completely agree with you guys and your yeah. strategies. Know your averages. Know what other people are bringing in. If you can watch the weigh-in, I highly recommend it, even though Scotty Mac doesn't like it. If you can do it, I would say you I do I just it. want to say one thing. Fred McDonald was very great with these tournaments. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gave his life for this. Scotty Mac, I am proud of him. He... Does he not have the voice for that? Oh, he has I the mean, absolute best yes. voice, yes. You, you couldn't get a better person to do what he does, and we're yep. thankful to have He's him. He's one of so, a kind. I mean, yeah. we're fortunate to have him. Yeah, as, I'm, as very, a to I'm fortunate to, to actually call him a good friend. Yeah. So, yeah, great. 
Um, let's wrap it up here and then we'll get some questions. I want to ask you guys one question and I'm going to throw this out to both of you. Mark, we'll start with you. One piece of advice that you can give to, to a, a person that would help their tournament fishing. One piece of advice. Don't, don't get on, don't, don't get on somebody else's trail. Don't follow somebody else. Make your own way. Learn the waters. Learn how to understand the waters. And and then go from there. And if you, you lose by that or you win by that. Uh, I Yeah, I, I've sat in one spot because I chose it. And I another boat approached me and said, Mark, we know where they're at. Come on, follow us. And they took off. And I said, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I stuck with my sank with the ship and you know and I learned from my sinking. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you can't if you you if you don't learn it then you're you're a follower, you're not a leader. Completely and, understand. And if you want to be consistent, you have to be a leader and go out on your own and understand what you're doing. Pay your dues. Pay your dues, but you learn. There's there's like I mean, there, there's at least six different fundamentals that you start with mm -hmm. every every day that you start with. And, and you base yourself on them fundamentals and you go out there and you put them to work and uh, it becomes your staple. And you, So you're, you're talking speed, direction, talking speed, current, water temperature, temp. currents, the temps, the, 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 the uh, direction that of your troll, the... Mm -hmm. uh, you never want to troll on an angle like this. Exactly. You want, you want your whole boat to be straight. If you can have it like that, mm -hmm. if you if it's way out of whack like that, go offshore a little farther, mm -hmm. or go in tighter. If 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 the temperatures will allow you to go in above the shelf, go in above the shelf. The current will be less, and you can get back to your straighten. Or go out, you'll you'll be like this and start heading on an angle, trying to get out into deeper water, and keep going out, and you'll slowly see your spread start to do this. And that's where that's that's a good spot to be. That's how you get it dialed in? That 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 the fish like it there too. I completely agree with you. You know they're Cap. on this main highway we don't see. When the currents are flying, they're like they're flying, right? Well, they're not gonna they're not gonna you're not gonna get them during that. And if you do, you're very lucky. If you go over to the side, that's where they're all sitting. They don't want to be swimming 100 miles an hour. They yep. they don't want to be doing this all day. Right. They they get over and they feel comfortable. You know, so you get over that comfortable spot. That's a big thing right there. Great advice. Yeah, Mark, but it's second advice. nature after 30-some years. You don't think about it anymore. You, just, you put yourself there. It's like breathing, kind of. You just do what you know you have you, to do. When you look at your spread and you, you instantly go, no, you go, that's wrong. Yeah. I'm, I need to do something here. Yeah. I yeah. thought you were going to say, what, what was your most important piece of equipment on the boat? I was just going to actually <laughs> say that. You well, know, let's let Captain Letty do it. Three years ago... You know, I put his rod holders on my, my boat, mm -hmm. and it, it didn't take me long to realize they made me a better fisherman. Okay. And everybody said, well, how can a rod holder make you a better fisherman? It's just a rod holder. You put your pole in there, and that's it. I mean, we've all used rod holders for, for 20, 30 years. I mean, there's always been some form of rod holder. And the one thing about the rod holder that I realized really quickly is all the little attention to detail like we've been talking about. I can put, with that rod holder, I can get the angle on my divers, if, if it needs to go back a little bit, if it needs to be up a little bit, based on the current, mm -hmm. so I can get my, my, my spread where they're not, uh, we all have divers that bump each other mm -hmm. sometimes, or our, when we go reach up and we got lines that are crossed on our planer boards. Absolutely. The, the rod holders, you can get them at the right angle exactly that keeps your line separated and your spread exactly where it needs to be, and when you get fish on, running six rods, I can literally one hand flip the rod holder with the pole in there and clear the spread and get the one whole side of the boat opened up now to come in. And I never lose fish. Yeah. We don't because now. something's in the way yeah. or it gets around the diver. So that makes you a better fisherman. I agree with you. With the rod holder. Yep, I agree with you. Good equipment definitely makes yes. you a better fisherman. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So it, it's, uh, I didn't just come up one day and say, I'm going to make a make a rod holder a friend customer of mine asked me if i would make some because there's none that he liked on the market and he he's very well to do he invented a modem for the computer he's a he's he's very well doing to do. okay yeah so uh 
it took me a long time to come up with this, and I came up with it, and it's it. I mean, this is going to be what the future, the, all the holders will be. This we're going to we're going to show this off here in just a couple minutes, guys. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple quick questions from uh, everybody that's watching. One, okay. I'm going to throw out to you guys though, right now, because this was a great question from Ryan Purchase, I believe, is who it was. Your most memorable tournament and why, Mark? The last tournament. Last year's. This, this whole summer. Oh, this whole last this summer. Whole summer. Because I, you don't even have to say why. I know why. I'm telling you, I, mean, I think everybody out there knows yeah. why. That's watched this. If, I just if you, wish that they all can have one moment like that. What I had, yeah, and turn your hearts and you'll and I'm telling you what, the Lord will lead you in a good path. That's, I completely I, agree. How about you? My, mine was in 2016. I was fishing on Mark's boat. We were fishing the championship. We were the one of the final four boats. First day we caught one fish, little coho fish. And the second day we went out and we had caught one 15 pounder and it was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I remember this one. Oh, yeah. And we, we were not doing very well at all. We had to and, get up on the stage and weigh three fish. And mm -hmm. we were like, man, I'll take two like that right now, you know? <laughs> and so he had some clients and the one guy, that's what he did is drive the boat. I kind of worked aside. He worked aside. And I went up on the front of the bow and we were fishing just down in the tens and I you were right along the shore in 30 foot of water and it was just calm slicky water ice cold big blow and I went up in the front of the boat and I was sitting up there and I'm like something's got to change here and I said Lord you got to show me what to do and I went down I took over I said Tim he's like six foot five 300 pounds I said you're out of here great guy great guy. great guy I said I'm driving and I pointed it went back towards the pier head pointed it out a little ways Mark, he's like, I'm going to change some stuff up. He put a rigger down with a meat rig and 30 foot of water, 100 foot back, and 13 passes, and boom. I said, we're marking one. Boom, it, it went off. I turned around. Just as I put it down, yes. I turned around, and I heard, and I went, you know. Mm -hmm. So he catches that one, and he gets it in, and I flip the bolt right back around, and I'm like, we're going back to those fish. He literally... Got the rod right back in there, walked up the steps, and all of a sudden I seen him just turn around and grab the rod again and fish number two. Two fish in like 15, 20 minutes. I remember that From tournament. a dead sea. I, I mean, remember there was that. nothing going on. We were fishing that tournament also, and I remember that story when you guys came in. And my Unbelievable. First, my first thing was, we got to get the rods back out there, you know? And I go, wait a minute. It's quarter to one. <laughs> we're done. So okay. so this all started at about 1230, and we got to be in at one o'clock, mm -hmm. you know? Amazing. Yep. Yeah. And you guys and won the, the big guy, the six foot yep. five guy. I know there's a god out there now. I mean, that was <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. I, I know there's a god out there now. Yeah. He's, you guys, you won the overall that year on your boat. Yeah. You guys won the overall last year on your boat. So, <coughs> all right, let's open this up to some questions, and then we're going to show off some rod holders to everybody. Uh, if you got any questions for these outstanding captains, please throw them out there right now. And first, let me say this, uh, guys. Thank you so much for your time, both of you, for coming on tonight. You guys. Gave some great information out there. I'm sure uh, many people out there have taken some good, good advice from this thing. So, if you got questions, throw them out. Otherwise, we're going to show you some of the best rod holders on the market. We're going to tell you how you can get some. Man, yeah. So somebody, no, it, there's like 30 second lag. Somebody's saying, can you explain that a little better? If you're, if you got six rods out and you're fighting a fish. Is it legal to get that other rod out there? If you can run nine of them, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So you can run nine and you're already three shy. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah, that's the way I look at it as well. I mean, you're, you're well in the buffer zone yep. for doing things like that. A lot of people saying what a great show this has been and how much they appreciate it. I completely agree with them. Thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. If you can't pre-fish... Uh... <laughs> if you can't pre-fish and you're coming on Friday night... You know, the six things that I said, mm -hmm. some of them are going to really help you yeah. at that time. Yeah, hold your breath and hope for the best. Yeah, well, just you, you got your computer to pay attention to where we didn't have that in the olden days. Yeah, there's so, three things. So now, Current, temperature, yeah. and, you know, the wind, the wind direction. Mm -hmm. Those are the three main focal points. Absolutely. And then find your temp when you get out there. Yeah. Uh, in general, Blind Osprey, my first mate, Tim is on here. Uh, in general, what speeds do you guys like to run? Well, we, we, we usually run, I mean, if, if, if we're pulling flashers and flies, we're running 2.3 to 2.5. Um, and then 
that's just kind of a starting point. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like Mark was saying, if we get a fish on, I'll usually put a bag in. If the, you know, if I don't have the bag in already, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll have a bag in and I'll throw another bag in and mm -hmm. slow us down. I do and the then same. a lot of times I'll get hit when we're going really slow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the speed aspect is something that you play with. Don't right. ever go the same speed right. all day long. Play with it, and you'll be surprised. Sometimes we catch fish when we're doing one six, one seven, one eight with two bags. You know, mm -hmm. so this is what I say: the shallower you are, the faster you go. The deeper okay. you go, the slower you go. Yeah. All right. Great advice, guys. Um, Hack3 Outdoors wants to, wants to know, what is a good tournament format for a first-time tournament angler? So I guess they're asking with a... What's a good tournament to get into? Yeah. That... Well, the, the amateurs are mainly five fish. A lot mm -hmm. of them are five fish with each day, yep. the two days. You know, as an amateur, that gives you a chance to boat five fish mm -hmm. each day and and do, you know, you can be competitive. And definitely do the 333 three, three also. Yes, yep. at the same time. Yeah. There's plenty of amateur boats yep. out there that have won 333. Oh, and if, and if they you have the advantage. And if you point. don't think you can or don't want to stress yourself out for five fish, just fish the 333. Three, three. Absolutely. Yep. And you just three fish. Your feet and if it. you fish the 333, three, three, you don't have to get three fish a day. No. You can get one fish one day and two fish the following day or vice versa. Zero first day, right. three the next day. Yeah. And that'll, that'll get you warm and get you started into it. Scott Garves wants to know, do you guys run sliders on your riggers? I don't like to, um, mainly because they, they can ca cause issues getting into your your divers. Mm -hmm. That that spoon or whatever you're running, you mainly it's spoon or J-plug. When the fish streak up over, they'll hit your, your divers. I find that they may get you a couple fish here and there, but you could also break off yeah. more Some, than what you get. Sometimes if I'm fishing kings and then all of a sudden it's just dying and I'm in a tournament and I got like eight yeah. fish. I'll turn and burn. So I'll turn and head west, and I'll run spoons on everything, and then I'll put sliders on because yeah, I'm okay. trying to get, you know. But when you start having meat rigs and, and divers and sliders and, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them big kings, man. By the time they hit, then they got your slider, and then they're running into your diver, and yeah. so. Uh, get a little shiny. I'm so not afraid to cut a lot of tackle to get a fish, but I mean, you want to kind of keep your, keep everything smooth and. And in the groove and keep, you know, keep everything. Keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike Reimer wants to know, when you're running just two riggers, are you guys talking about keeping one at 49 degrees, do you keep the other one above or below it? Or Both. Are you, you're moving it. Moving yep. all over the place. Yep. I, I completely agree with that. Dave Swoop wants to know, uh, when you're talking about speed, are you talking about speed on over ground on GPS or are you talking fish hawk? I, I, I tend to look at the ground, you know, speed over ground on my GPS. Okay. Just because down below... If, if, if I'm looking at my spread, my divers, and they're really bent over right, and I'm looking at them, I'm doing 2-4 on my mm -hmm. GPS, you know, I really don't care what I'm doing going down below as long as I got the right look to my spread. Yeah, I've, I've grown that way over the years as well. When, I, when I'm looking at my spread, I can tell when everything's running correctly. Yeah. And I might look at my my probe speed, and it's telling me I'm at 3-2, yeah. and I won't change it right. because I know In everything looks days, okay. The, I think it was uh, Eagle Claw had this little apparatus that would tell you how fast you're you're trolling by the amount of pressure on your rod. Mm -hmm. and it was crazy. I don't but, remember yeah. that. No? That's, no. See, That's yeah. back way before yes. my time. Um, here's a good question. Uh, for tournament fishing, do you prefer to store your fish on ice or in the live well with just fresh water? We usually get you know, two or three bags of ice, and then the minute you get one fish, put the fish in water with the ice, smerge it, and then as you continue to get more fish, we just add more water, and then eventually you're just going to have cold water by the time you're done. You yeah. know, that's yep. what I typically do. And yeah, you, you need to keep water on the fish because yeah. they dehydrate. Absolutely. Their body's all just a big percentage of water. Here's a good question from Gabe Sells and about he's a part of the Ultimate Salmon Derby, the Hi, show that we Gabe. had. On. You hey, guys Gabe. know Gabe? Oh, yeah. What do you guys think of the Ultimate Salmon Derby? We put a show out on that last weekend. I watched it. Oh, great. And, you know, and I don't mean no disrespect, but that's that's first time I really watched your program. That, and, the, no disrespect and Gabe, taken. And and but I watch it more now. I, I you know, it's uh, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh it was great to see Gabe and you guys, that sounds like a really good deal, what he's got going on. And I really commend him because your phone just fell or went oh. out. 
you to go out. Nope, that's fine. I really commend him because he's really letting it all hang out there. I mean, he's uh, he, he's literally putting his life on the line for this thing. It's a it's a big responsibility, and I can understand because I, I put everything into these rod holders for all you sportsmen out there. So. Absolutely, yeah. If you guys uh, my 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 stand just uh, died on the battery, so I'm holding the phone right now. That's why you can't see me, but. If you haven't seen last weekend's show, go back and watch it. I think that, that Ultimate oh, Sand. Awesome. I think yeah. so, too. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing. I absolutely yep. agree. So on that note, looks like we're getting a cue here from maybe God, like Mark's talking about. Maybe we should show off some rod holders okay. here, and uh, I will grab right. the phone in my own two hands, and we'll go from there. Okay. Where do you want to start, guys? You tell me when you're ready, right here. I am ready right now. Okay, this rod holder, I set out to make the world's best rod holder, and then so I ended up putting the world's best components in it. This one's all stainless. Those all over there are titanium, all of those. Those are going on a, one of the a big boats that you're going to see on Lake Michigan this year, brand new one. That's another one for a big boat, but you come up to it, and you grab it, and you turn it and put it wherever you want to put it. So like if your diver went, you'd pull it back like this and pull your diver out of it. When you let it go, it comes back, but then you want to lock it. So, and it has a gimbal inside of it for you guys that have your diver rods. So you would take and see how it's got. So you put it in here and there's a detent in there so that your diver don't... It, I, I used to get my divers to roll over like that. The wire would go against the side of the rollers and score, and then a fish would hit it, it would score those, I'd break it off, and then, you know, those rods were 250 each, and I got tired of that, so that's all. This is the one that we're doing right now, though, this holder. So just one-handed operation, and you can lock it in place as well once you get it right. there. They weigh about eight, nine pounds. Eight or nine pounds. Yeah. What are they made out of, Mark? All stainless. All stainless. Wow. So, Beautiful. Yeah. And then here's one that, this, I have these in stock, they're high-end. But I mean, you only live one time, and they're the best in the world. This is number one in the world. This right here, I don't know if I'm going to put plastic on the top for the saddle, or if I'm going to use aluminum, but I wanted you to kind of take a poll today to find out. It'd be like $20 more for the aluminum. But you just take, lift it, done. You run a diver in it. Very nice. So. Dan Canham saying, buy once, cry once, and I agree with him. Wow. Well, you know. a lot of people, they'll sell a boat and everything stays on it, you know, mm -hmm. all the rod holders. These rod holders, when you buy them, they go with your new boat. You, yeah. you'll, 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 you'll keep the rod holders. And the, the track, they, they, they slide it all into the different tracks, okay. whatever track you want, so they're real easy. We literally, on the boat, you literally move this thing this way, way more than you move up and down. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're moving divers out. We're doing that with divers on there. And... Uh, so, they're they're awesome. I love them. They're mine. I get it. Mark, if people want to take a look at these things online, what's uh, what's your website? It, it's 360marineinc. 360marineinc.com? Yes, sir. I can see it right back there. I've seen it on your shirt all night, too. Okay. So, but this one right here, I don't know if I, you know, this also does this. Straight up in the air. If you wanted to, use it like for a regular, my roofs. It's got this little bottom piece on here. So you put your rod right in there, you lock that, and you can use it for a tube. And I also made this, I'm going to use this bottom part for either or. This right here is a tube that this tube will go right on, you take that bolt off and you put it in there, and that's part of that there. So. Okay. So everybody that's watching this right now, put it in the comments what you like. Uh, would you rather have an... A metal stainless uh, rod holder on there, or is the plastic fine for you guys? Captain Mark would like to know. What else you got to show us there, Captain okay. Mark? This is a graph mount. Here's a single one. So you take this, you push this little lever down here, put it wherever you want to put it, turn it, lock it. It's not. If you hit the pier, your boat will sink and everything. That will not move. <laughs> okay. This is a double one, double jointed. So this one will go wherever you want it to go. You lock that up. Same here. And it works real easy. Very nice. And then those are all for customers. I've been building these for 30 years right here. 
there, and river boats. Then here's two new kinds of winches that uh, I'm going to see these on pontoon boats in the future right there. And then this is for a little bit bigger boat. That little box is just a, a free fall, one for a drift boat, and then the other one's for a river boat, a jet boat. Gotcha. Then this one over here is the same holder as that, that one right there. However, this one, you know, it's got the same features, but this you take and you loosen this up and it expands and contracts. So when you put it in, you know, it's all loose and then you tighten it up and it ain't going nowhere. Nice. Very nice. 360marineinc.com if everybody wants to take a look at these. Some people are uh, asking on here, could you make these out of aluminum? That one's going to be out of aluminum. That one will be out of aluminum. Okay. Because yes. these are too high. I mean, I get it. I, I went down to Florida. I went to the Miami Boat Show. And I talked to a lot of, a lot of businesses, a lot of manufacturers and stuff. And they all, a lot of people were interested. So I have to re, you know, go back and visit them. But... We took a test ride on a, on a boat with five outboards on it, and the captain of it said, is it okay if I bring a couple on board and to go with you guys? And I said, sure, no problem. So I brought one of these, and I had it on that boat, and the guy, I got to have them now. He bought he bought two of them right off, you know, right, <laughs> so I had, had to, uh, I was too short for the show down there. He couldn't, he couldn't, he had to have them now. <laughs> he had to have them now. Yeah, have them. Uh, yeah, you got some nice stuff, Mark. There's no doubt about it. You can tell that you put some lifetime lifetime quality in all of these yeah. you were showing me these uh here a couple of weeks ago and i was i was pretty amazed at all of them all right everybody, we're gonna wrap it up right there a lot of people saying thanks to both you guys saying you guys are both legends a lot of other nice comments such as that so mark you know thank what? you i'm a humble person and when you go to and get in a, a tournament and if i come in and i only got one fish i'm going to stand in line i'm going to weigh that fish and I'm, and I'm going to be the same person whether I win or, or lose. I'm no better than anybody else. I thank the Lord for, for taking good care of me. And I, I just seek him. He'll take care of you. And if I can help you out in any way, and you know, these stuff's expensive. If you're low on, on money or whatever, and you twist my arm somehow, <laughs> I, I'm here to help people. That's, that's Very nice, you, Mark. I appreciate that. So, Captain Lenny, any final words? Yeah, I just, um, you know, thanks a lot for, you know, talking with us and oh my pleasure you know it was a, it was a great great night yeah i completely agree everybody take a quick look around these are all amazing things if you got any questions captain lenny what's your website slipknotcharters.com slipknotcharters.com captain mark 360 marine inc three 360 marine inc pass that everybody thank you so much have a great night and we will see you back